الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل لا يعلم من في السماوات والأرض الغيب إلا الله وما يشعرون أيان يبعثون بل ادارك علمهم في الآخرة بل هم في شك منها بل هم منها عمون وقال الذين كفروا أئذا كنا ترابا وآباؤنا أئنا لمخرجون لقد وعدنا هذا نحن وآباؤنا من قبل إن هذا إلا أساطير الأولين قل سيروا في الأرض فانظروا كيف كان عاقبة المجرمين ولا تحزن عليهم ولا تكون في ضيق مما يمكرون ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين قل عسى أن يكون ردف لكم بعض الذي تستعجلون وإن ربك لذو فضل على الناس ولكن أكثرهم لا يشكرون وإن ربك ليعلم ما تكن صدورهم وما يعلنون وما من غائبة في السماء والأرض وما من غائبة في السماء والأرض إلا في كتاب مبين إن هذا القرآن يقص على بني إسرائيل أكثر الذي هم فيه يختلفون وإنه لهدى ورحمة للمؤمنين إن ربك يقضي بينهم بحكمه وهو العزيز العليم فتوكل على الله إنك على الحق المبين إنك لا تسمع الموتى ولا تسمع الصم الدعاء إذا ولوا مدبرين وما أنت بهاد العمي عن ضلالتهم إن تسمع إلا من يؤمن بآياتنا فهم مسلمون وإذا وقع القول عليهم أخرجنا لهم دابة من الأرض تكلمهم أن الناس كانوا أن الناس كانوا بآياتنا لا يوقنون ويوم نحشر من كل أمة فوجا ممن يكذب بآياتنا فهم يوزعون حتى إذا جاءوا قال أكذبتم بآياتي ولم تحيطوا بها علما أم ماذا كنتم تعملون ووقع القول عليهم بما ظلموا فهم لا ينطقون ألم يروا أنا جعلنا الليل ليسكنوا فيه والنهار مبصرا إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يؤمنون ويوم ينفخ في الصور ففزع من في السماوات ومن في الأرض إلا من شاء الله ويوم ينفخ في الصور ففزع من في السماوات ومن في الأرض إلا من شاء الله وكل أتوه داخلين وترى الجبال تحسبها جامدة وهي تمر مر السحاب صنع الله الذي أتقن كل شيء 
إنه خبير بما تفعلون من جاء بالحسنة فله خير منها وهم من فزع يومئذ آمنون ومن جاء بالسيئة فكبت وجوههم في النار هل تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إنما أمرت أن أعبد رب هذه البلدة الذي حرمها وله كل شيء وأمرت أن أكون من المسلمين وأن أتلو القرآن فمن اهتدى فإنما يهتدي لنفسه ومن ضل فقل إنما أنا من المنذرين وقل الحمد لله سيريكم آياته فتعرفونها وما ربك بغافل عما تعملون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear beautiful brothers and sisters in Islam Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has allowed us to live until we witness the beginning of this amazing month the month of Ramadan especially in the year 1443 Hijrah which is equivalent to 2022 Alhamdulillah, look how blessed we are. We are able to pray next to each other. We are able to fill the masajid. And if I just take you back a couple of years ago, around this time, we were all stuck in our houses. We weren't allowed to leave the houses. We weren't allowed to come and congregate in the masajids. The masajids were empty of people. Subhanallah, here we are tonight, this morning. We have all gathered together, mashallah, and to pray Salat al-Fajr together in jama'ah. Uh, dear brothers, <coughs> And today is the first day of Ramadan and inshallah ta'ala and we will continue with our Fajr reflection and we will continue with our journey in Surat An-Naml. And, but inshallah ta'ala and what I would like to also remind you is it was one year ago, the beginning of last Ramadan when we have started doing the Fajr reflection the way we do right now. And alhamdulillah a whole year has passed and now we have reached Surah An-Naml, the end of Surah An-Naml. So Alhamdulillah, we started from Surah Al-Baqarah last Ramadan. And today we have reached, Alhamdulillah, the beginning of this Ramadan. We have reached the end of Surah An-Naml. And inshallah ta'ala, uh, we will continue with our Fajr reflection until we finish the Quran. But remember, the Fajr reflection and, for example, and recordings have only started from Surah to Yusuf. So the Fajr reflection, which is, uh, <coughs> which you can find uh, in our YouTube channel, begins from Surah to Yusuf. So what we have not recorded so far is from Surah to Al-Baqarah all the way to Surah to Hud. We have not recorded that. But inshallah ta'ala, by the time we finish the whole Quran, and in the Allah ta'ala, when we finish the Quran and what we have left now, we will go back from, we will go back to Surah to Al-Baqarah, and inshallah ta'ala, that part will also be recorded. So, Inshallah ta'ala, I just want to remind the brothers and safe and important to park the cars, you know, when you come to the masjid in a safe place. Also, inshallah ta'ala, if you can donate water, inshallah ta'ala, those of you who want to bring water to the masjid uh, so people can break the fast with the water that you bring and iftar donations as well, inshallah ta'ala, I would like to remind our brothers to take that opportunity, mashallah, to earn so much ajr, inshallah ta'ala. And... Our mo this morning, our journey, inshallah ta'ala, will continue with Surat, uh, with surat uh, An-Naml. And we have started from the ayah, قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us in this verse, and he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ Say to them, O Muhammad, لَا يَعْلَمُ قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ No one who lives in the heavens or in the earth has knowledge of the unseen. 
Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the knowledge of the unseen. Everyone else does not have that knowledge. And Aisha radiallahu anha used to say, anyone who claims that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has the knowledge of the unseen, that person has absolutely lied. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he only knew from the unseen what he was taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing more than that. And I'm going to tell you a story that Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala has mentioned in his tafsir. Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala has mentioned in his tafsir, he said, once uh, a fortune teller came to Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. We know Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf who he was, a very powerful uh, general and leader during the time of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. So when this fortune teller came to him and he said to him like he wanted to test him, and Hajjaj ibn Yusuf أَخَذَ حَصَيَاتٍ فَعَدَّهُنَّ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كَمْ فِي يَدِي مِنْ حصات. He said what Hajjaj ibn Yusuf has done, he was a leader, very powerful and very feared man. People used to fear him a lot. And he said to this uh, fortune teller who was, uh, who was in, him, in his presence that time, he said to him, after he picked a number of pebbles, he, he counted them, Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, and he said to him, can you tell me how many pebbles do I have in my hand? The fortune teller told him how many he has in his hand. He told him, and he got it right. Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, look what he did the next time. He took a number of pebbles this time, but he did not count them. He just put them in his hand and he said to him right now, how many do I have? Hajjaj ibn Yusuf himself, he didn't count anything. He doesn't know how many he has in his hand. He just said to him, how many do I have right now? The fortune teller got it wrong, the first attempt. And then he gave him a second chance. He said to him, okay, try again. He tried again and he got it wrong the same time, again. And then the fortune teller said to Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, do you know why I got it wrong the second time and I got it right the first time? Hajjaj ibn Yusuf said to him, tell me, what, how, how did that happen? He said, the first time when you counted it yourself, it was no longer from the unseen world. But once you did not count, it was from the unseen world. That's why I didn't know it. Did you get the story? I'll repeat one more time. He said to him like, why, how did he get it right the first time? He said, the first time I got it right because you counted them. And once you counted them, this became part of the seen world. But the time when you did not count them, you just took them. Without counting them, you didn't know how many they were yourself. That time they were from the unseen. I have not been able to get access to them. Subhanallah. So you can see. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ لَا يَعْلَوْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not know when they will be raised from the dead. So the people do not know when they will be raised from the dead. بَلِ الدَّارَكَ عِلْمُهُمْ Remember, we are in Surah An-Naml, and this is the final journey of Surah An-Naml. Surah An-Naml, so far, we have studied the tafsir, uh, the, we have studied the story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. We have studied also at the beginning of this surah the story of Prophet Sulaiman, the story of Prophet Saleh. We have studied the, the story of Prophet Lut, and we have also studied the powerful verses, and that have caused the person who has an apostated from the religion, the murtad, the person who was a murtad for ten years. Someone who has memorized the Quran from the age of nine or ten years old. And when he grew up and he studied the deen, he left Islam. And for ten years, he was propagating atheism. He was debating with mashaykh and ulama, Muslim ulama. And he was being invited by so many TV channels, asking him questions like, why have you left Islam? You have memorized the Quran. And there was a time when he was even asked, and what is it that bothers you the most after you left Islam? He said, I can't forget the Quran. He said, I want to forget the Quran, but I can't forget the Quran. The Quran is in my head. Just imagine this. And I'm going to remind myself and you brothers and sisters in Islam, the guidance that we have today is not, is not guaranteed. No one should ever feel like, Alhamdulillah, that I'm Muslim today. I will remain Muslim until I die. Who knows that? 
No one knows that. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi always used to say in his sujood, Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabit qalbi ala deenik. O oh Allah, the tenor of the hearts, keep my heart firm upon Islam. Imagine if the Prophet ﷺ needed to say that dua whenever he was doing his sujood, whenever he was prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this dua all the time. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabit qalbi ala deenik. Memorize that powerful dua. Because you don't know how long you're going to stay a Muslim. How long you're going to stay and hold on to your religion. So this man has said, I left Islam. For 10 years, he was propagating and inviting people to atheism. But he said at the end, he came back to Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him guidance after 10 years. He came back to Islam. And when he was asked, why did he come back to Islam? He said the verses of the Quran, which we have recently recited, not today, but the previous session. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, أَمَّنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ بِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَمَّنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَأَنزَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَنبَتْنَا بِهِ حَدَائِقَ ذَاتَ بَهْجَةِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَمَّنْ جَعَلَ الْأَرْضَ قَرَارًا وَجَعَلَ خِلَالَهَا أَنْهَارًا When he said, when I read those ayat and made tadabbur, I could not keep myself away from Islam. He said, I, I was not able to resist it any longer. That's why I accepted Islam. After those ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us the akhirah and the non-believers disbelieving the next life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, بَلِ الدَّارَكَ عِلْمُهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ بَلْ هُمْ فِي شَكٍ مِّنْهَا بَلْ هُمْ مِّنْهَا عَمُونَ Their knowledge cannot comprehend the hereafter. They are in doubt about it. They are blind to it. بَلْ هُمْ مِنْهَا عَمُونَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَإِذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا وَآبَاؤُنَا أَإِنَّا لَمُخْرَجُونَ Those who disbelieved, they will say, and they have said, أَإِذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا وَآبَاؤُنَا What, <coughs> when, 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 and we and our forefathers have become dust. Shall we be brought back to life again? Look what they said. And we have heard such promises before. And so did our forefathers. These are just ancient fables. That's what they said. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet قُلْ Say to them, Ya Muhammad. سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ Say to them, O Prophet, travel through the earth and see how the evildoers ended up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to those people, you travel around the world and see what I have done to those who came before you after they have disbelieved. وَلَا تَحْزَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَكُنْ فِي ضِيقٍ مِمَّا يَمْكُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet and grieve you not for them. O Prophet, do not grieve over them. Do not be distressed by their schemes, by their schemes and plotting and, 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 and their plots against you. They will ask you, Ya Muhammad, when is the promise? When is the time that we have been promised that we're going to be destroyed or the next life is going to come? They also say, when will this promise be fulfilled if what you say is true? قل Say to them, Ya Muhammad, عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ رَدِّ فَلَكُمْ بَعْضُ الَّذِي تَسْتَعْجِلُونَ Say to them, maybe some of what you seek to hasten is near at hand. And then after that, Allah said, وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَذُو فَضْلٍ عَلَى النَّاسِ Your Lord is bountiful to people, though most of them are ungrateful. وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَيَعْلَمُ مَا تُكِنُّ صُدُورُهُمْ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He knows everything their hearts conceal and everything they reveal. وَمَا مِنْ غَائِبَةٍ فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there's nothing hidden in the heavens and on earth that is not in a, in a clear record. إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the beginning of the surah, he talked about the Qur'an. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes back to the Qur'an. إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ Verily this Qur'an narrates to the children of Israel most of that about which they differ. The Qur'an clarifies all those things that the people of Israel, they do differ about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the Qur'an makes it very clear to them. وَإِنَّهُ لَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and it is guidance and grace for those who believe. The Qur'an is guidance and also rahmah for those people who have iman. Otherwise, if you do not have iman, the Qur'an is not going to be a book of guidance for you, neither will it be rahmah and, and grace for you. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ يَقْضِي بَيْنَهُمْ بِحُكْمِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Truly your Lord will judge between them in his wisdom. He's, he's the Almighty, the All-Knowing. فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ The Prophet ﷺ was commanded, have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are on the path of clear truth. 
Brothers and sisters, we are upon the truth. We have to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am going to remind you, I'm going to remind you these words of wisdom from Hatim al Asam. They're so powerful, they're very catchy. SubhanAllah, they will catch your attention. Imam Hatim al Asam, who was considered to be the Luqman of Hadihil Ummah, the wise man of this Ummah, he was asked, because when people saw how much he trusts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people said, said to him like, they said to him like, you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much and, and your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unbelievable. It's very deep. How come that you have been able to achieve this? He said, I have achieved this because of four reasons. These are four pillars that he based up, that he based his trust upon. What are these four things? Number one, he said, He said, I came to know that my provision, no one will eat it. No one is going to take it away from me. And because of that, he said, nafsi. He said, now I feel peaceful and tranquil. People will not fight over money if they put trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they know whatever provision that was written for them, no one will ever be able to take it away from them. You will never become upset with your boss if he sacks you, if he tells you to leave the job. You're not going to become too upset with him because you know your rizq in that company has ended. Finish. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got another rizq for you somewhere else. Subhanallah. He said, once I realized that no one can ever eat or take any provision that was written for me, he said, I feel very peaceful. Do you want to know the second one? <clears throat> The second one he said, وَعَلِمْتُ أَنَّ عَمَلِي لَا يَعْمَلُهُ غَيْرِي فَأَنَا مَشْغُولٌ بِي He said, I have also come to realize what I have to do, my duties are upon me and no one else will do it for me. And because of that, now I am busy with them. That was number two. And number three he said, عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ الْمَوْتَ يَأْتِي بَغْتَةً He said, also I came to realize that death is going to come at any time. And because of that, فَأَنَا الآن, He said, I am ready to receive death at any time. And I'm always in competition with the angel of death. I'm always at my utmost preparedness for death. Subhanallah. Look at that if you reach that level. And the last one he said, Alimtu. He said also, what I came to know is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will never be able to hide away from the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ana mustahin minhu. He said, since I came to know that I will never be able to do anything wrong without Allah's knowledge, without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing what I'm doing, without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having the knowledge of what I am doing, because of that he said, I am also, and uh, I am shy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, because of those four things, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So look at now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the Prophet Sallam, فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why, ya Allah, why should I trust you? Know you are upon the clear truth. As Muslims, we have the truth. Okay? If anyone else claims the truth, they are not telling the truth. We are the ones who have the truth. Who told us that we have the truth? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where did he tell us? He told us in the Quran. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet he's also being reminded his limits. The Prophet was, was told, you cannot make the dead hear. What does that mean? The Prophet was told, you cannot make the dead hear. That means is, those people who will never accept Islam, you can never make them accept Islam. Aisha radiallahu anha used to use this ayah as an evidence to say the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to use this ayah as an evidence that the dead people do not hear anything. But we know incidents where the Prophet ﷺ spoke to the dead people in the grave. The end of the battle of Badr, the Prophet ﷺ addressed people like Abu Jahl, people like uh, Umayyah ibn Khalaf, people like them who were inside the grave. The Prophet ﷺ talked to them after they have died. And Umar radiallahu anhu said to him, Ya Rasulullah, why are you speaking to these dead people? And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to Umar, you guys, he said to them, they, you are not able to hear me better than they are able to hear me. Your ability to hear me right now and their ability to hear me as I'm speaking to them right now is exactly the same. 
Subhanallah. So they were able to hear. Also, Imam al Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala has said, the dead people, when they're in their grave, they can hear us. That's why when we go to the grave, we give them salam. If they were not able to hear the salam, we would not have been required to give them salam. That's why when we go to the grave, what do you say? Assalamu alaikum ahla diyari mu'mineen. Ahla diyari muslimin. Ahla diyari mu'mineen. Wa inna insha'allahu bikum lalahiqoon. Nas'alullaha lana wa lakum al-afiyah. That's why. So when we go to the grave, we give them salam. And they retain that salam. Subhanallah, the soul comes back to the grave. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said, إِنَّكَ لَا تُسْمِعُ الْمَوْتَى وَلَا تُسْمِعُ الصُّمَّ الدُّعَى إِذَا وَلَّوْ مُدْبِرِينَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the Prophet is also being reminded. These are very powerful reminders for us. وَمَا أَنْتَ بِهَادِ الْعُمِّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet you cannot guide, you cannot guide the blind out of their error. If the Prophet cannot guide the people from their, from their error, who are we to guide them? We cannot guide them. So remember that we can only help people, we can only help them, kind of like informing them of the truth, that's it. But we cannot force them to accept it. So the Prophet is being told, وَمَا أَنْتَ بِهَادِ الْعُمْيَ عَنْ ضَلَالَةِ إِن تُسْمِعُ إِلَّا مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِآيَاتِنَا فَهُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ You cannot make anyone here, you accept those who believe in our signs. The people who are, who are able to guide are those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written guidance for them. فَهُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And they submit to us. وَإِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَوْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَخْرَجْنَا لَهُمْ دَابَةً مِنَ الْأَرْضِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when the verdict is given against them, we shall bring a creature out of the earth. At the end of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this surah right now, at the end of time, a beast is going to come out. When that beast comes out, it will identify the people. It will identify some people as being believers and some people as being disbelievers. And this is one of the signs of the final day and just before it comes. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, when the, when the Dabba comes out, it will identify the, the believers and disbelievers. Imagine when the Dabba comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to kalimuhum, it will speak to the people. A beast, an animal that will speak to the people. And they will understand, the, uh, they, they will understand this beast. The ulama, they said, what kind of beast is this? The ulama, they have different versions of what this beast, beast is. Some of them, they say, this beast is like a human being, okay? in the form of an animal. Some of them, they have said, no, it, it is from, from, from the progeny of, uh, of the she-camel that, that was brought into existence during the time of Prophet Salah. And many other aqwal and, and that the ulama have mentioned. But Imam al-Sa'd has said, we don't know exactly what kind of beast is going to be. But what we know is, definitely it will come out at the end of time and it will speak to the people. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَيَوْمَ نَحْشُرُ مِن كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ فَوْجًا مِمَّنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِآيَاتِنَا فَهُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ The day will come when we gather from every community a crowd of those who disbelieved in our signs and they will be led in separate groups. حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوا Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, until when they come before him, he will say to them, did you deny my messages without even taking them in? Or were you... Or what were you doing? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask them. وَوَقَعَ الْقَوْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمَا ظَلَمُوا فَهُمْ لَا يَنْتِقُونَ The verdict will be given against them because of their wrongdoing. They will not speak, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. أَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا جَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. Did they not see that we gave them the night for rest and the day for light? There truly are signs in this for those who believe. وَيَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ This is the last passage of the surah. وَيَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي السُّورِ فَفَزِعَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ On the day, on the day the trumpet sounds, everyone in heaven and on earth will be terrified, 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 except such as Allah, God wills, and all will come to him in utter humility. وَتَرَ الْجِبَالَ تَحْسَبُهَا جَامِدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you will see the mountains and think they are firmly fixed, but they will float away like clouds. Subhanallah. That day, you will think the mountains are fixed firmly, but they will be floating. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they have, and, but they will float away like clouds. This is the handiwork of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has perfected all things. He is truly aware of what you do. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ خَيْرٌ مِّنْهَا Whoever comes with a good deed will be rewarded with something better and be secure from the terrors of that day. وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ فَكُبَّتْ وُجُوهُهُمْ فِي النَّارِ But whoever comes with evil deeds will be cast face downwards into the fire 
are you rewarded for anything except what you have done? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Innama umirtu an a'buda. The Prophet is being commanded to say the following. Innama umirtu, say, O Prophet, what I am commanded, what I am co commanded to do is to serve the sustainer of this town. Allah, the Prophet is being told, tell the people, you are here to serve the sustainer of this town, meaning the, city, the town of Mecca, which he has made inviolable. Everything belongs to him. And I am commanded to be one of those devoted to him. Quran. The Prophet also was told, say to them, I am commanded to recite the Quran. Whoever chooses to follow the right path does so for his own good. This is very powerful. Brothers and sisters, just pay attention to this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet, tell them that you have been commanded to recite the Quran. So who Whosoever receives guidance, receives it for the good of his own self. Do you know when we practice the Qur'an, it's for our own benefit. We are not benefiting Allah. Remember that. Whenever you follow the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, do not think you are doing Allah a favor. Allah is telling you, you are not doing me a favor. It's for your own benefit. It's for your well-being. It's for your protection in this life and the next life. It's for your own benefit. وَأَنْ أَتْلُوَ الْقُرْآنِ فَمَنْ اِهْتَدَى فَإِنَّمَا يَهْتَدِي لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ ظَلَّ as for the one who goes astray, for example, and whosoever goes astray, say to him, I am only one of the warners. I'm only warning you, that's it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended the surah. Okay, we have extended the, and the tafsir a little bit longer this, this morning because we wanted to end the surah and start a new journey tomorrow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the surah. وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Say ya Muhammad, Alhamdulillah. Praise belongs to Allah. He will show you his signs so that you will recognize them. Subhanallah, how many signs can we see all the time? Everything that we can see is a sign that teaches us that Allah exists. The heavens and the earth, the stars, the day and the night, all these are powerful signs. They show us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. Your existence is a sign that Allah exists. وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Your own selves, are you not able to see that? SubhanAllah, the way you function, the way you look like, SubhanAllah, the ability that you're able to hear me right now, you're able to see me, you're able to understand what I'm saying to you right now. Who gave you all that ability? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, وَقُولِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ سَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ فَتَعْرِفُونَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and you will recognize them. Your Lord is never unmindful. وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ This is another serious warning. وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concluded the surah. Your Lord is never unmindful of what you all do. Whatever we do, big and small, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of it. Whether your parents can see you or not. Whether your parents can see you or not, Allah can see you. Whether your friends can see you or not, Allah can see you. Whether your boss can see you or not, Allah can see you. Whether your wife can see you or not, Allah can see you. It doesn't matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ He's always aware of what you do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, mashallah, the guidance of the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who take heed from the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who follow the truth that Allah has blessed them with. We have the truth, ikhwani. Always be confident of that. Wallahi, ikhwani, we are so blessed. Subhanallah. I gave you that story. I told you that story of that brother, a Muslim brother who left Islam for 10 years after memorizing the Quran and learning the Tawheed and everything. He said, after 10 years, I came back to Islam. What brought him back to Islam? It wasn't the debates that he had with the Muslim scholars. He said, the Quran is what brought me back. He said, it wasn't like the, the, the arguments that my, my interlocutors gave me. He said, it's the Quran that brought me back. Subhanallah, the Qur'an is so powerful. If you pay attention to the Qur'an and you reflect upon the Qur'an, the Qur'an can give you guidance. Subhanallah, it's very, very powerful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah is never unmindful of what you do. Everything is clear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jazakumullah khairan brothers, tomorrow we're going to be starting a new journey, the journey of Surah Al-Qasas. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan for your patience and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your fast, insha'Allah ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.